Okay, we, we are starting now, the, um, we're almost done, we keep the energy alive. Um, we are, um, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have the pleasure to introduce you to three members of the European Commons Assembly which is uh, an open process and self-organized initiative that has been uh, running since, since December of uh, 2016, coming together and trying to develop common strategies and a common agenda on commons uh, across Europe. I have, uh, we have here Eva Kuczyk. She, uh, Kuczyk? It's very difficult. Hi, <laughs> uh, it's Eva Trukic. Uh, she's uh, an architect uh, from Belgrade, and she's also the co-founder of the Ministry of, of Space, that it's a, a space that promotes uh, creation and working of the urban, com of the urban commons. We have uh, Sophie Blumen, she's the co-founder of the Commons Network, and she's also one of the main initiators of the European Commons Assembly. And we have Stako Stromboso, he's the Troncoso. <laughs> He's the, um, the advocacy coordinator of the Peer-to-Peer -peer, uh, Foundation. I, I wanted to start uh, with you, Eva, if you could maybe uh, explain us a, a little bit more about the uh, Nedavamo Beograde movement. Um, it, is a, it was a, um, a social movement that was uh, trying to stop the construction of a urban massive building in, in Belgrade. You organize uh, demonstrations, you self-organize um, an, an initiative to try to stop the, the institutions to change the law to actually build this uh, massive building. And this, uh, this initiative then decided to present itself as a municipal candidacy for the, for the city of Belgrade. And I wanted to know what were the claims of uh, from the commons perspective that Nedavimo Beograd was doing and why now it's thinking in, into constituting itself as a, um, as a municipal, as a municipal move, uh, platform candidacy. Okay, thank you, Marta. Uh, well, um, I actually, uh, Ministry of Space Collective initiated with a few more individuals and collective a very big uh, initiative called Nedavimo Beograd or Don't Let Belgrade Drown. We as a Ministry of Space um, started to work on different things that are related to the city development in 2011-10 uh, by addressing uh, the, the importance of right to the city and citizens' participation in urban development and also by building alternative models for uh, public spaces and public property, how they can be uh, run and used, uh, but not also only like in practice, like a guerrilla style by squatting or entering the abandoned property, but also uh, with uh, analyzing legal frameworks and plans and um, institutional frameworks in order to advocate and to, to uh, make analysis, uh, policy proposals for different, uh, different things. Uh, in 2012, um, the, the, back then he was uh, um, uh, he was actually running for the city level elections for a mayor. Now he's a president of our country. He presented with uh, Roberto Giuliani, mayor of New York, a brilliant project called the uh, Belgrade Waterfront. Uh, it's basically uh, Dubai on water on Belgrade, uh, 100 hectares of uh, luxurious residential housing, uh, office buildings, higher tower in the highest tower in uh, this part of Europe, and also the biggest shopping mall in Balkans. Uh, so when we uh, saw the project, it was clear, and also yeah, investment will come from uh, uh, Abu Dhabi. Um, he will give us, the investor will give us 3 billion euros. It's, he will not invest, or will not, he will give us. Uh, so um, uh, when we saw the project, it was clear that uh, that's the, the, the city made a decision to go directly into neoliberal development of the city. But also it was clear that there's many shady businesses going around that. Uh, so we started by um, uh, uh, reacting on changes of the plans. That were th th their first steps was changing of a general plan, then details plan, then different laws. Um, and what was uh, actually what we did was we invited people. Hundred people came and we wrote comments on uh, on general plan together. 
there were more than 3,000 complaints on the ch changes of general plan, which never happened in the history of urban planning in Belgrade. But we also brought the choir, self-organized choir, to sing at the public inquiry. And all the media broadcasted about the choir. Nobody mentioned that what's going on um, about the, the project. So we figured out that if we want to address the things, then we have to make kind of scandals. So we did it in parallel with the institutional fight. After a few months, we were banned from every single media, so there were no possibility to speak out loud what was the problems, uh, what are the problems with the with the project. Then we decided to publish our own newspaper, and uh, step by step we were building the movement. At the beginning, it was very difficult to explain what's the problem with the project because they brought the investor and our government brought the shiny, beautiful model, and everybody was talking about the aesthetics of it, and nobody went into what's behind it. Uh, and basically it's a privatization or giving for 300 hectares of city center in Belgrade, like the most valuable land that we have. Something that is very common in the third world countries. Um, and um, in the beginning, from 2014 to 2015, we had a very small protest, around 2,000 people joining, uh, different action in public spaces, um, uh, panel discussions about it, newspaper, um, different radio shows, like whatever we, we could make. And in 2016, during the elections, um, during uh, the election night, uh, part of the city center was demolished by 30 people with balaclavas and uh, like the whole machinery. And uh, nobody could have believed that it really happened, like in the middle of Belgrade, like in the middle of the night. Some people were tied up. One of the men who were tied, he died after a few days. And that was kind of the, 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 the moment that everything, uh, turned, everything was turned upside down. Uh, so we started organizing protests. And the first protest was just like inviting people to come to the street. There were maybe 5,000 people. And every two or three weeks we were making new protests. So at the end we had like 20 to 30,000 people on the street. Um, the, the people who were, um, who were talking from the stage, it was a track, there were also academics, researchers, experts uh, in urban planning, but also actors and activists and random people from different social medias. Um, in 2000, at the end of 2016, after the massive protest, that was clear that we have to uh, take back the city. So that we, the, 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 the fight is about our city and we will fight for it. So the struggle is uh, uh, around the commons, around the feminization of the politics, around democracy, around the uh, housing right, around to every single person that lives in fear. So uh, basically what we want is better life and the decision is made to go as a municipal platform on the elections. The elections will come probably at the beginning of next year and we will see uh, what will be the, the results. But we were very empowered and inspired by the... Uh, Barcelona in Comú, Aura Madrid, Marea Atlántica. Yeah, I, I, was, I was about yeah. to ask you if, if actually the Comú's narrative is, a, is part of the strategy that you might be considering, because here, as you're saying, Barcelona in Comú specifically, but also Aura Madrid, uh, uses the, the narrative of the commons to develop their, their policies, and it's very present in the type of actions that they, that they try to implement, and, but also in the discourse, in, in like the, mani the imaginary that, they, that they, they, they work with and they build upon. So is it something that you yeah, also... Well, like, it, it consciously is the narrative of the commons, but we are not addressing it as such, because it's a kind of, uh, we have a different context in our country, so we had a communist heritage, so it's kind of, um, I mean, we don't, I mean... <laughs> I cannot tell you the story when we tried that and people were like, aha, uh -huh, so you're a communist. And then after uh, one protest, the girl approached me and she said, will you take like my apartment? And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's kind of, you have to rebuild the narratives and change the vocabulary in order to mobilize people and to explain what are you aiming for. So that's the idea is behind, but you have to build it step by step. And moving beyond the narrative and actually going to the concrete actions and the concrete practices, I think the European Commons Assembly, it's, um, it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's an initiative that has a lot, a lot to say about this. In the past three days, the European Commons Assembly has been coming together in Media Lab Madrid to try and continue developing this common agenda of, of, of commons. 
hundreds of, of commoners have come to, to the assembly to try and be working together intensively in these days. I wanted to ask you, Sophie, as one of the coordinators of the, of the process, what have been the main challenges and, and achievements of these three days of work, but also why do you think it's important to connect these dispersed uh, actors that are across Europe working uh, disconnected? Why do you think it's important to, to bring them together and collaborate towards a common action? Right, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with the, um, with the first question then, because I think it builds more um, towards the second. So, <clears throat> why, we, why it's important to, to connect, connect these people? So, um, well, there's, there's people working on, on commons initiatives all over Europe, um, like, like you, some, some, some use the words, some don't. Um, uh, and it's, it's a very rich movement uh, that it, in the sense that it works on all these different issues it can be from yeah from 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 city development and public spaces to uh, uh, knowledge commons and uh, 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 city you know community community gardens do it yourself initiatives it's very broad um, when we when we <clears throat> what we thought when we initiated when we started talking about it was okay um, actually this these people are not, there is not, they're connected in some ways, but it would be, it would be wonderful if we could have a, a larger uh, uh, network platform where, these, where people are connected, which could also allow for this movement, which is not really so much politicized always. A lot of people are just doing things and organizing and collectively governing their resources. Um, if they could be united and be more of a political uh, entity, have more of a voice, because in the end, all these initiatives, all these people are stand for a different logic than is currently than the current logic, which is currently dominant. Which we could talk. We say, if you think about Europe, it's about growth and competition, and extraction, um, um, GDP, right? And and something all the, all these different people in all these different places have felt. It's like we have to start caring for our for our direct environment we have to collectively organize we have to be generative uh, we need to do in our actions also in our economy it needs to be sustainable socially sustainable it needs to be ecologically sustainable so this different logic which is present in all these different initiatives um, is part of a larger narrative which is actually very uh, very powerful but also very urgent <laughs> because the current state of affairs the current neoliberal model is not getting us where we want um, and it's also, uh, right now, Europe is um, kind of falling apart, right? Um, so, so this was, this was all the, so they, how can we not only unite people and have translocal solidarity and have exchange of best practices, but how so can we also amplify this, these ideas and give this more of a voice? Um, uh, yeah, and then just to add um, another more sense of, uh, before I go into what, we, what we've worked on, it's more a sense of urgency, I think, um, if you think about, and I think a lot of uh, this has been one of the topics that's been discussed here a lot, Europe and um, the state of affairs of Europe and the, uh, the, the, some of the states retreating into nationalism, the, the ways of xenophobia. And I think this is due to, um, to, to some extent to a loss of a feeling of sense of a loss of control people have, which is real. Which is real. They have a sense of loss of control over, over their lives. And... Um, uh, this is I mean, due to many things. It has due to globalization, to centralization, and Europeanization is also a centralization of power, and decisions are being made further away. This is a real, this sense of loss is real, and I think you can have solutions, you can have fake solutions, maybe a solution, you know, a, a solution may come from the far right is nationalism, xenophobia. But, yet, but giving people, organizing an economy, and a democracy that gives people more control over their direct environment and their resources. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's, that also answers that craving for self-determination, and that's also where the commons narrative comes in. So, to go into, so we went to, to, to Madrid. Um, we had an assembly about over a year ago in, in Brussels, where, which was the first meeting. Um, where we met in the European Parliament and outside of that, and now in Madrid we thought, of course, it's a very... Uh, a rich environment to, to bring people to from all over Europe to also learn from experiences here, um, and, um, and, which are, which, and and of course there's Aura Madrid, so it's about engaging as well with the municipality. Um, so what we what we we worked on specific issues, 
um, we had a few kind of ideas like what what is it that we can what kind of strategy can commoners have in the urban environment to protect and create commons what could be what could be proposals to institutions and what could be um, institutional change what are the institutional changes are needed these were kind of like these background questions but we had people working on very specific issues or sometimes less specific issues that were also already determined before we had the meeting, so there were several uh, in a collective way. So there were, for example, there were people working on, on data commons and collaborative economy, which is a kind of is, you know, thinking about the smart city and what the problems are and how you can uh, reorganize that, or people working on the right to the city. Uh, law for the commons was another working group. Um, uh, one was solidarity. Uh, um, so people worked for, for one and a half days in these specific groups to create strategies, proposals, ideas. Um, and we also, um, I mean, for some, you know, I'm first time talking about challenges, for some of these groups it worked really well and the methodology that we used worked really well. In other groups it was, it was more difficult because there was diff many different people with different expertise and different agendas for what they actually wanted to get out of the ECA, of course, or out of and the assembly. Speaking about um, unifying agendas and creating this common um, uh, um, map of actions, do you think the commons facilitates actually this convergence of, of actions and unification of a European agenda, or actually working in, in the perspective of the commons, you see that the national differences actually play a high role? I'm thinking about urban planning depending on the on the on the on the national state you're working at but also um, yeah urbanism for example Could, so if, if whether it's a helpful narrative to work within or whether if it, if it facilitates this creation of a common agenda yeah I mean I, I, in general I think yes I think it's it's a, it's, a, it's a comprehensive narrative which has certain implications if you think about uh, agenda and policy so in that sense absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I think that one of the problems um, in the current st status quo of Europe is that sometimes we lack the capacity to imagine new structures and new spaces where actually a change can, can happen. And trying to move beyond the nation state, how, and maybe this is also a question for, for you, Stacco, how do you think that the, the commons can be the frame to start trying to rephrase this these, uh, working method? Um, do you have any, any thoughts on that? <laughs> so the the state, the nation state, that's that's a hot potato. Everyone has an opinion about this. I think it's useful to sometimes frame the state like a technology. And technology is another divisive subject. So you will have techno determinists that say certain technologies will lead to certain outcomes. As they said, it's the same with the state. We will take the state and tomorrow we'll proclaim the great nation of the commons or this agenda or not. And we cannot be naive about that. Certain structures do not lead to certain outcomes, but they favor certain interests. So if someone dominates a technology, they can use that for their advantage. If certain powerful groups dominate the state, they can use that for their advantage too. Um, the state is a theater of struggle. And the most valid examples of stateless democracy, this being revolutionary Catalonia, Aragon, the free territory in Ukraine, and uh, Rojava, you see that there's a partial collapse of the state because of a warlike situation. So maybe we want to do better and to, you know, how can we bring the logic of commoning to this enabling mechanism? And I think it's useful to see the, if you're familiar with like the triarchy, and the triarchy is the, the state as this mechanism, the market, and the nation as the imagined community. So what we have now is we have a state, a technology that facilitates the interests of the market. And in the imagined community, we have this implicit consent for the hegemony that, this, that the market uses to impose its logic. And it's, it's funny because now with the rise of nationalism, you see in this imagining community like having this kind of like runaway feedback loop where it repeats, you know, like we are the imagined nation and it rises up. And even though that endangers some neoliberal market dynamics, um, the market will always favor fascist like solutions rather than any redistributive strategy. So, how could we turn this around with the commons? Well, we would say that maybe the commons 
or civil society can be the imagined community. And it can be a transnational imagined community, understand as people that self-organize to create and distribute value according to their own rules. And this sounds really nice, but how do we amplify it? How can we make the commons the attractor that uses the technology that is the state and the technology that is the market to its own ends? Um, as far as politics go, as far as the states, we do have the examples now of the, of the rebel cities of Madrid, Barcelona, etc. But of course, like you don't just one does not simply scale up. This is <laughs> this is quite complex. But I think that they do point a way on how things can be done. And what I feel are the failures of vanguardism. Um, so, for example, in Greece, there was a lot of talk of doing more things with cooperatives, with the social solidarity economy, but Greece decided to play with the big boys, and when there was a vote, and all the polls say that people would say yes, and people said no, that was on a Sunday, and the whole of Europe cheered, but on a Monday, we went back to the usual game. Um, you can see it in the failure of Podemos, the relative failure in the local and national elections, as compared to the municipalists, who actually won. Um, we'll see what happens with Labour in Great Britain, etc. But you can see that this common-like dynamics actually can engage with people because I think that people want to, want to participate. But if the commons get the state, I don't think that we would want like a Keynesian solution you know, to like try and play nice with capitalism or the totally bureaucratic statist solution that you know, we will have a planned economy. What do we do with the market? Um, once you get power, if you do not hold economic power, um, you're not going to, going to last in that state very long. And we also, have to be, uh, we also have to be economically strong. And I think that many people think that the political fight is more realistic than the economic fight. But you also have to see where the economy is going. And if you think about the, um, you know, the, the so-called sharing economy, which is like this cartel for deregulation, etc. And if you think about like jobless recovery, etc. You cannot think so much of laborist solutions but how can we take ownership of this kind of dynamics? And, you know, like, right now it's not so much about seizing the means of production. If the means of production are in your house, if you're an Uber driver and, you know, like, you're providing the labor and you're providing the capital. So I think that is, it is realistic to think about these things. And we have to, again, with that triarchy, to have both um, markets and the economy and the state amplify the, the logic of the, of the commons. And what do you think can be um, a healthy, if I can use this way, dialectic between the, the commoners that are working in social movements and grassroots uh, movements and those that are actually working in the institutions uh, that have actually arrived to city councils? How do you think this dialectic could or should work? Um, because they're all human beings. And in, in many cases, like for example, in the example of Madrid, it's actually the same people. And that's actually a problem because there's been kind of a brain drain and you don't see so much direct action anymore because people are engaged in the institutions with the limitations that that, 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 that provokes. But it's still pretty much the same community. So I think that we need commoners inside the institutions and I feel really sorry for them because I would never want to be in that position. But I think that the dialogue will come naturally. And I think that they have to be honest about their challenges because I know that people also get like a lot of flack. Oh, when we were in the squares, we said that we were going to do this, etc. And these people right now, they're working like 60 hour weeks and uh, you know, they're coming up against this, this big wall. And as it was mentioned before, again, like why do we have to stay engaged with the state? They can do certain things at the local level, but the big refugees welcome banner kind of tells you that, then at the state level, the legislation does not allow them you know, to like, um, self-organize with, with this act of common Eva, are you also having this uh, debate among the members of Neda Bumbi Great and those that are becoming part of the, of, the, um, of the candidacy? Are you also thinking on how to maintain this um, narrative of the commons and commons actions, how to implement it once hopefully you get to the institutions? Uh, well, yes, we had a long discussion about that and it was clear in one moment that uh, the, the part of the group has an ambition to go as a political platform and also uh, that that's maybe the only way now to deal with the situation that we are uh, in. Uh, we are now in the phase of uh, dividing into the, the ones that will stay on, the, on this side and another who will go for the, for the politics. 
Um, I, I still don't know how it will look like in the future. We had uh, many uh, meetings with uh, Zagreb and Ash and also Barcelona and Comu, Cambiamo and Sino Paso, because it's something that we are like familiar with. Um, and uh, basically what we believe is that somebody has to stay on the other side. It's, it, I mean, it won't work if we all go uh, to the institutions and you have to make a balance. You have to also have a kind of controlling mechanism for those who are entering uh, the world of power and politics. When, when the ECA went to, to Brussels in, in, in November, you were also speaking with some uh, members of the European Parliament about, about this issue. What ideas did they brought to, to ECA and how was the discussion with, with them? How was the exchange with the, with the parliamentarians of, of the Congress? Right, so these were the uh, um, MEPs, the members of the European Parliament were part of a, uh, a commons intergroup, which actually was the intergroup on common goods and public services. Um, so it's an inter-parliamentary group uh, uh, on a, cer a certain topic. And, um, you know, when, when, when this was established, the, the, the commons intergroup was like, wow, there's a commons intergroup, right? That we need to work with these people. Um, so that was one of the reasons also to, to think about doing the commons assembly in, in Brussels and also to think about establishing a longer term relationship with them and seeing how we could how we could work together. So, um, uh, you know, they were this commons intergroup. There was from different, it was uh, Greens and um, uh, uh, Left and uh, the SND. Um, so it was a different different parties together. Um, uh, so they were excited about this idea of hosting a commons uh, commons assembly and welcoming commerce from all over Europe in the in the Parliament. Um, and they uh, so that was it was a nice it was just a nice corporation. And the idea to, to, keep, to keep working in a corporation has been, what we, what we discovered is that actually it's, it's, it's great to have a commons intergroup, but commons is of course a perspective, it's a perspective on reality, it's not an issue. So if you have different parliamentarians working, in a, on all the, one works on energy, one works on transport, one works on macroeconomics, so they actually don't work on the same things. <laughs> so it's really hard for them even to work together and then to work with us as well has, has proven you know, apart from, you know, incidentally, but on a more long-term exchange base has proved hard. Um, but they, for example, what, they, what, this, what this group of MEPs has, have done, have, they didn't really succeed, but they almost got, um, uh, in some process, energy voted as a, to be as recognized as a common good by the rest of the MEP. And I think they only lost by a small, small margin, which was for them a big success to almost changing the narrative, changing the lo logic of having energy recognized as a common good instead of a, you know, commodity. Um, I, also, I want to open the, um, the, this moment for, for, for questions. I don't know if anyone has anything to ask to, to, to ECA, to the European Commons Assembly. Any questions? Thank you very much for your presentations. And um, I have a very uh, precise question. Uh, the point you, you made about um, uh, once you are you know, on the other side, you have to organize the, your people to, um, you know, to keep the control over the inst public political institutions. So, I mean, do you have examples, for example, how it works uh, in the Spanish uh, uh, cities where the, the citizens, the municipalist platform have, have taken over the power. Do, do they, because I've been elected two years ago, so do they do that with uh, civil society? Uh, empowering them to take uh, control of them? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah well, um, at least in Barcelona and Comú they say they do. Uh, so they are people who stayed uh, as a uh, as members of the movement, but on the like uh, civil sector part of it, and also in Maria uh, Maria Atlantica in La Coruña, so uh, part of the of the group from the from Maria Atlantica, they entered the the city parliament, but part stayed on the street. And Zagreb Yenash, uh, Zagreb is ours, is doing the the same thing. So they uh, uh, they started as right to the city Pravo na Grad movement, then they split, and part of them, like five members, entered the the city parliament. So. Uh, um, we, I mean, 
we have kind of impression that uh, we will also gain some uh, some seats in the in the city parliament but i can uh, everything that we did from the beginning like from the beginning as a ministry of space like by squatting until now it's very new in our lives we are not professionals in that we didn't have experience with everything is like ad hoc and step by step so i am uh, i would be uh, i mean i would like to see somebody there uh, but I don't know how it will look like. I mean, we are preparing for it. It's the same now with um, people are asking us, what is your political program? <laughs> we don't have a political program. That's, that's actually the truth. So we made offline and online platforms and online forum functions like you can join it and suggest the topics and then we all uh, discuss together and then you build the program together. That's basically the idea. So. I don't know what's the best for you, you know, so we have to share it and then build the, the common thing around that uh, together. So I guess it will come um, with, with the future and it will be in the next few months. Um, we have time for one more question and if there's any. Hello, and yeah, thank you very much for all your contributions. I had a question for you all. Um, yeah, I have the feeling that the whole municipalist platform are really active on, in urban areas and big cities, but we're not really thinking about uh, rural areas, and I'd like to, to know how you see maybe the, the evolution, how could we galvanize the, the networks in rural areas as well? Thank you. I mean, the, the, for, yeah, the, minis, the, the <laughs> so, yeah, I don't really identify so much with the municipalist um, movement. That's why I'm, from, I mean, from a commons perspective, I think it's, it's very much rural. You know, it's, I think some of the best or the, the best developed uh, uh, examples of commons are in rural areas. And, and for example, we have, um, you know, like the eco villages, uh, people are, they are a member of the commons assembly as well. So, um, and, and, the members of the people were in any way as part of this of part of the of the assembly are i wouldn't say they're very much um city you know only city based so so that's why i'm like uh yeah um but but so for the broader question that you have in mind like how can we make this i guess the success of the municipalist uh uh, uh platforms how can we um yeah drive it out or include it? The rural areas and that I, I actually I, I I don't know. This is my my answer. I, I wouldn't know. Maybe Stucco has 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 some thoughts on this. Uh, I live in a village, <laughs> so it does piss me off a little bit. Like the imaginary constant imaginary about the urban commons and municipalism. In my village, we had a municipalist coalition, and they actually came second. They they almost did it. And I think that their experience is really interesting because they're in a village and they're in the opposition and no one is telling, is telling this story. Um, in Spain, just like in the US, if you think about the victory of Trump, you get more votes proportional to like the, the population that you have, etc. So in reality, the rural areas have massive outcomes in national elections. And for example, my village has a, it declared itself a canton in the first Spanish Revolution. It's got lots of co-ops. So you can see a lot of common in, even if they don't call it that way, that's almost there. And I think that in rural areas, you can ex not even explain the logic of the commons, but actually tie it to their practices. And I think that this is a fertile ground for politicization. If you think about the Trump phenomenon of going to like all these forgotten places, um, I just contrast between like Hillary going, hey, you people are stupid, you should be like me, and this asshole saying, I love you guys. And when they hear I love you, it's like, oh great, we feel recognized. And I feel that this is a big absence. And again, just the way that it's set up at the national level, it's something that really needs, needs to be worked on. And I feel really strongly about it. So, so thank you for asking. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much to ECA for, for being also here this evening. Um, I want to uh, invite Lorenzo and, and Miguel Urban to, to, to join the stage. Thank you very much. <laughs>